This is Dr. Peter Hirsch and welcome to our first Keratoconus video blog of 2018. We took some time off over the holidays and I hope you uh, enjoyed both the holidays and wish you all a happy new year. Today I wanted to discuss uh, something a bit unusual uh, for keratoconus. Uh, this is a potential novel treatment of the optical problems that many patients get uh, with KC. Uh, you recollect that keratoconus is secondary to an irregular, thinned, and distorted uh, optical surface of the cornea. And this causes what we call a visual static. Uh, it's like getting a lot of non-focused images on your television, uh, diminishing the quality of, of your picture, and decreasing uh, high definition that you would get if there were no static a at all. The a clinical analog, the visual problem that KC patients have uh, with visual static uh, uh, typically occur in low light situations and these can include glare, a halo, uh, a double vision, uh, multiple uh, uh, images. Now aside uh, from contact lenses, uh, which are the mainstay of treatment to improve uh, these uh, visual uh, aberrations, uh, there are notably two interventions that we uh, perform to improve uh, visual uh, quality and uh, the keratoconic uh, corneal contour. As you see on top, the first of these is, is Intax, a procedure we've been performing uh, for uh, almost two decades. Uh, remember, uh, Intax are clear semicircles uh, that are inserted into the cornea. So if you picture a contact lens, punch a hole in it, and cut it in half, that's somewhat what an Intax looks like. And you can see it on the left side of, of the screen uh, here uh, in, in one of patients. Uh, Intax uh, pushes on the corneal bulge and tends to smooth it out somewhat. So if you look at the topography maps uh, on the right, uh, left side shows uh, before the surgery and it shows where the Intax is placed. Uh, the center shows after a surgery where you can see that the keratoconic cone has shrunken. And on the right, the blue, is the area of flattening caused by the Intax. Uh, the goal of this is to make that cornea more symmetric and to decrease uh, visual symptoms like glare halo and, and double vision and to improve visual function. Recently, we have uh, been treating patients with what is called topography-guided PRK. Uh, this is uh, somewhat like a LASIK procedure, which you show, which you can see schematically on the uh, on the right side of the screen. But what we do here is we use your corneal topography maps to program uh, the laser, and using a PRK technique, uh, which is LASIK without a flap, we remove just a little bit of tissue from the surface of the cornea again to try to make the cornea more regular. So if you look at the topography maps below, in the middle is the keratoconic cone before treatment, the treatment pattern shown right above it. On the left is the keratoconic cornea after treatment, and you can see that the central red area has been flattened to a great extent, and the corneal smoothness has been reestablished. Over on the right are the changes that we've made, flattening the central cornea, which is steep, and steepening the peripheral cornea, which was originally flat. Now, the camera inlay is a new corneal inlay which has been designed to improve vision in normal 
eyed patients uh, who are looking for improved reading vision. So it was a new technique and technology developed for something entirely different uh, from keratoconus. You can think of the camera inlay as a donut. The outside of the donut is a brown color with microfenestrations that they're little holes uh, in the uh, brown area. And there is a central uh, pinhole, so to speak, uh, that you look out of. And this is an inlay that's placed directly into the cornea over your pupil, the area uh, that, uh, that you see out of. The goal that we have using this inlay in keratoconus is to use this donut to block the non-focused rays that are coming from the outer sections of your cornea. So we want to try to block those rays that are causing visual static while allowing the central rays to remain as best focused as possible. You can see it here uh, is schematically. The camera inlay is placed over the pupil uh, of the eye with the goal of blocking keratoconic rays that are non-focused. Now clinically, the camera procedure is done with numbing drops. We use the same laser that we use to start a LASIK procedure, but this laser makes a pocket for the inlay. You can see it on the upper right here. Once the pocket's made, the camera inlay is slid into position and properly centered over uh, your pupil. You can see here on this schematic again that the goal of the inlay is to block non-focused static light to decrease optical side effects in keratoconus. Now this is something uh, brand new. Uh, the camera inlay again is uh, devised and developed to improve reading vision in patients with normal corneas. It is not FDA approved for use in keratoconus. However, uh, both the patient and doctor uh, can make an appropriate decision to see if it is a reasonable treatment for particular problems uh, that you may be having uh, with your own KC. So I thank you for joining us uh, in this new year and look forward to new subjects uh, as uh, the months of 2018 continue. Thank you. Good night.